Are you stuck in a meeting all the time? Or conferencing with friends and family across the country and around the world? Well, Canon has just released the EOS Webcam Utility Beta, so now you can use your high-quality Canon camera instead of your computer's poor webcam. Delivering informative capability-based reviews and tutorials on camera gear, filming techniques, and content creation. Hi, I'm Simon, and this is The Ordinary Filmmaker. If you're new here, please like and subscribe as it really helps my channel grow, and it won't cost you anything at all. And all the links to everything I talk about in this video are in the description down below. Previously, connecting your Canon camera so that it could be used as a webcam or for live streaming took a little bit of effort and expense. Well, at least that used to be the case for most of us. Canon just released the EOS Webcam Utility Beta software, allowing us to use our Canon cameras without the need to purchase any other adapters or software. But there are a few catches, there's always a few catches. Not all cameras are supported, but most cameras released in the last few years are covered, including popular DSRs like the very expensive 1DX, the 5D, the 90D, the 80D, and most Rebel series. All current mirrorless cameras are also supported, as well as these PowerShot cameras. Unfortunately, my 70D is not on the list. That's a little bit sad. Anyhow, I will warn you that getting the software does take a few steps. And this is not an installation guide by any stretch. This is just give you an idea of what is involved and what the software does. Now, in the first page, canon.us slash livestream explains the software capabilities and sets out expectations. Now, keep in mind, of course, this is a beta. So don't be surprised if you run into a few issues. Locate your camera model and click on the name. Wait a minute. I don't see it. Huh. Wait. Okay, let's check Windows. Yep, there it is. Sorry guys, it looks like if you own a Mac, you're completely out of luck and I've just wasted your time, which is also a disappointment for this guy because I'm also a Mac user. However, if you do own Windows and you're running on Windows and it's the latest version, you shouldn't have a problem. Go ahead and download and install the software. Um, it's EOS Webcam Utility Beta 0.90. Now, once that's installed, uh, but before you connect the camera, this is important, before you connect the camera, what you want to do is you want to uh, make sure you set your exposure settings. Once that's done, then go ahead and hook it up to your computer using the USB cable. Now start your web conferencing software. And what you want to do in settings is you want to change the camera. So what you're looking for here is a camera called EOS Webcam Utility Beta Camera. Yeah, they didn't go ahead and give it some cute, cuddly name or anything, and, and this is beta after all. So once you've gone ahead and done that, then you can start using your Canon camera for web conferencing, which is really, really cool. It's really a nice touch. Uh, it's nice to see that Canon's come out and given, it, given, that, given that to us for absolutely free. We don't have to purchase anything extra. So that's really cool. Now, the one thing I didn't cover in this video is that you can also use these cameras for live streaming. But... That's not the point of this. A lot of us are stuck at home and we, you know, here, here's the thing. We, we get up in the morning, we get dressed, we groom ourselves, we make ourselves look good. Then we sit down for a video conference and we got a silly little webcam that just makes us look terrible. So this, this is nice because these cameras that we own, they produce much better results. So go ahead and try it out. Uh, let me know what you think. Um, are you using this? Uh, was the installation process pretty simple? Um, drop drop the information in the comments down below. Now, again, this is not an installation video, so if, you, if you're having problems with this, don't use this as a guide for installing the software. There are plenty online, and in fact, there's a link below to Canon's YouTube instructions on how to set this up, and it, it shouldn't be too difficult. If you're having problems, it could be because of the operating system you're running on, the service level, or even the camera that you have. Now, this is just going to be a really quick behind the scenes. Yesterday, when I published my video, I talked in the behind the scenes of all the work I had to do with the lighting and framing and all that. Well, I had to do a little bit of an adjustment to that one as well. A lot of these videos I'm getting done early in the morning. So this video was shot this morning about two hours before work so I could get it edited and hopefully out the door by nine o'clock. So hopefully it's nine o'clock when you're watching this. Well, I didn't realize until I'd post, I had this video in post yesterday that I'd made a few mistakes. So. I've lowered the lighting level on this light a little bit so I don't look as washed out a bit. And I have pushed the camera back a little bit because I'm using a 50 or a macro lens where the only way to zoom in and out is basically to move the tripod. 
So I framed myself a little bit better so I shouldn't be getting cropped off at the top here. So hopefully that looks a little better. Um, th this is an ongoing process. Uh, w with every change I make, it usually undoes something else. So I'm, I'm still trying to make this look more professional. I'm, before I worry about trying to redo the studio, I'm trying to maximize the capabilities I can get out of the green screen. Everything I've put into this video has cost money. And I can't just keep going spending more and more money. I need to maximize what I've spent already. And that's what I'm trying to do with the tools I've already bought, I'm trying to maximize their usefulness. So it's, it's more tweaking than radical changes. And the, the thing about tweaking is you get to learn a lot more about things such as lighting. If I'm constantly replacing things, I'm not really learning a whole lot. I'm, I'm trying to get an understanding of those new things and I really don't go in deep. This way, I'm really having to work my lighting. I've got seven lights and right now I've only got four of them in use. I've got three microphones. I've got a table now, I've got a chair, I've got a green screen. All these things are tweaks because of something else that I didn't do quite right. And eventually, yes, I'll have a much better looking studio, but for now, this is what I'm working with. Oh, and one last thing, don't forget, Sony has their conference tomorrow, their virtual press conference at 12 o'clock New York time. So that'll be something worth watching. Like I said in yesterday's video, I'd be surprised if Sony doesn't tease at the very least the A7S III or the A7 IV or some other DSLR camera. Who knows, maybe the A9 III? Nah, that was just, the A9 II was just released not too long ago. I'd be really surprised. I think Sony has to do this. They have to tease at the very least, if not announce, because Canon just came out full force, announced the R5. They've got people worked up. We haven't heard anything about the A7S III in, well, October 2015 is when we got the A7S II. So I'd be really surprised if Canon doesn't announce something, or sorry, Sony doesn't announce something because, you know, as consumers, we're, we're faithful to our brand only so far. And if it looks like the brand isn't showing us any love, then some of us, well, we get up and go. Anyhow, thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon. Thank you for watching The Ordinary Filmmaker. All equipment used and notes are placed in the description box, show more box, or down arrow thingy next to the title on the mobile app.